Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Community Voices. And today, this one is very, very special. Not only is it the 50th anniversary of hip hop, but we are joined by hip hop legend, one of the greatest still to this day, Jada Kiss. Welcome to Community Voices, man. How you, how you feeling? I appreciate you joining us. Happy to be here, you know, just happy to be here, baby. Pleasure for y'all having me on. It's always a beautiful thing when you can talk to a beautiful outlet and a platform and get your your voice heard out there. So anytime somebody wants to talk to me, I appreciate it. Love it. I love it. I appreciate it, man. I also know you're really busy, so I'm going to go ahead and get straight to it. So uh, I want to start off here because, you know, you've been, I've mentioned it like at the top of the top of the episode, you've been one of the most respected lyricists individually and still brought that same top tier level of lyricism with the locks, you know, with Styles and Sheik. And like you continue to do that same kind of level of like just that skill. It's always top tier, that hunger, that passion is always there. I would love to just know from that experience individually and, and as a group, what are some of the most impactful learnings that you've taken away from those moments um, from being able to see both sides and like approaches that have been happening in a successful way? Like what are the most like biggest takeaways from your individual career and your career with the locks? Uh, I think that the locks prepared me for my individual career. Uh, having two brothers like that, that's fierce lyricists like that, keep you on your A game, still sharp and still. Um, just our whole form, a whole infrastructure of recording, you know, getting there early, making sure the beat is loaded up, making sure you have enough water, make sure you have enough weed, making sure there's no people in there that distract you. Um, just all of the elements that do the best you could possibly do when you're in a session. And um, I, I really give all that credit to my brothers, Styles and Sheik, for just preparing me for when they weren't there to carry it the same way. You know what I mean? For and sure. that's, the, that's the beauties of having a three-man group because you can't, you know, you got two sides to turn to as crutches in case you need any type of help or any, you know, going through any type of anything while you're trying to figure it out. A hundred percent. And I love it too, because like y'all's growth as like a fan, it's been like beautiful to watch. Cause like y'all, of course, the top teams, like lyricism is always there, but then like the way y'all have grown and evolved, you know, outside of the career, outside of the rap scene, it's been like it's it's probably one of the most like dopest things to watch from a group and individually as a fan of hip hop in a minute for me. So I had to make sure I said that too, because it's super fire. Um of course, man. And uh, you know. You're like I'm. I'm talking about some of the things that you've done in the past, but you're still doing it. You're doing short films, business ventures. You're still just very passionate, doing uh, like still working. And for me, I think an interesting thing is that you know I keep mentioning that hunger and that passion when you rap is still there. Like it don't it don't go away. We see it all the time. I would love to just know, like you know, at this point in your career, like is there anything musically that you're still chasing or looking to accomplish from that like music uh, that musical perspective? I really, um, as far as music, I just love creating. I still got the passion and the hunger, and I love to challenge myself and test myself. And besides that, I just want to serve my core fans. Um, hopefully, a couple of new newcomers get on board. But I'm really for my fan base, my contemporaries, and just creating because I love the passion. I love. I still got the passion, and I love it. And once I don't no longer have that, I'll you'll no longer hear me. But um long as long as I have that, I'm able to do what I like to do and, and do it freely. And um I think when you don't have when when you're not in a bad space, you're able to create better. Mm. You know what I mean? When you're comfortable in your skin, you're comfortable and you got other businesses going on, other things going on that's just not occupying your time and stressing you out. Because this is a stressful business that's not geared for the artist. You have to fix right. all your, you got to cross your T's and dot your I's and pray and get a good staff. And hopefully you get the right lawyer and manager and things like that. And it works in your favor. But other than that, the artist is at the bottom of the, the totem pole in this business. So you got to really work and figure it out. But I, I love music. I love hearing stuff that makes me want to go to the stool immediately and once i no longer feel like that then i'll push back from the table but right now i still love it. i love when i hear anything that's 
fire. It makes me just want to go in the booth instantly. I love that. See, you, you transitioning perfectly to my next question. Can we talk about some of the things that still come out to this day to kind of still give you that that reignited passion, that fire to get back in the booth? You know, we're, I mentioned earlier, 50 years of this thing has been going on hip hop. It's been coming a long time coming, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, but it's, it's been something to watch and a lot to learn from as it continues to evolve basically every day. Um, you know, what does it mean for you? to kind of like reflect on 50 years of hip hop outside of the involvement that you've had within it. Oh, I love it. Um, I love the acknowledgement. I love the fact that they thought it was a genre that wouldn't last. They downplayed us. They thought it was noise. I have a connection with that because when I was first about to sign, my parents felt the same way. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do that. It's noise. You're going to college. You're going to do the American way of, you know, go to college, get a degree, be in the business field and, you know, that was their foresight of my future and that wasn't my foresight. So to be able to make it and then buy my mom's a house and do business with my dad and show them that I followed my dream and it worked and what y'all had for me, that wasn't my dream, but we still were able to, it came back full fruition that, you know, everybody's, I, I was able to do something I believed in and it, it transitioned to help my family. So it's a beautiful thing, you know what I mean? And 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 for them to downplay it and count us out and see how hip hop has evolved where we came so far, I love it. I just want to get another 50 years and, and keep evolving. Right. Because they're trying to divide and conquer. They, they break us down into demographics. They put East Coast against West Coast and down South and drill right. They don't do that with no, they don't have drill country music, drill R&B. They don't say East Coast R&B and West Coast pop. You know what I mean? You got to you gotta pay attention to the signs. They're trying to diminish us because we're stronger together. Yeah, man, that's that's a big fact. That's for sure. That's for sure. And they, and they see the power within that. They in see that the power. When right. you see the value and money involved into it, then the hands are on the pot. And they, yeah, no, I, I 100% see it, most definitely. And it's really cool that you mentioned that, too, because, you know, your parents didn't necessarily see that being a successful career path. But now you're in a place as a father that your kids have seen, you know, uh, 50, uh, this time of hip hop, this new generation of hip hop and what it can do and like the, the reality of it. And now they're able to like really, you know, have more of that creative freedom too compared to, you know, when you're growing up, it's like, you know, I don't think that's the right, like that's not really gonna help. But to me like that, passing on as the generations go and now they have that more creative freedom. I think that's like really beautiful too, just to see how like hip hop is changing, how that hip hop will affect like the next generation. So I, I love that, that kind of like distinction within the generations too. And, you know, we, we talked about all the moments, too. I know, like I said, ups and downs. I would love to know real quick, too, if you had to pick one impactful moment for yourself in that 50, what would it be? I know it's a lot. My bad. Well, I think making the decision to leave Bad Boy. Mm. Because that could have, you could have never heard us again. You know what I mean? We, um, when we, when we huddled up and said we was going to do the Let the Locks Go movement, we knew that. It could either go all the way wrong or the streets could help us get out of that thing. And we knew that we was going against a powerful entity being Puff Daddy. He had the finances. He had the resources to, to shelf us for life. And, um, you know, with the power, the powers that beat in the streets, they helped us get out of it and help us mend things back together with him. And um, that was a very impactful moment that could have went all wrong. And we knew it. We we said to each other, like, you know, after this, it could be over. But, you know what I mean? We're going to go in full-fledged or we're not going to go in. And that was another time we decided, let's go. And it, it worked in our favor for the most part. And I want to tap into that, too, because, right, like, I keep mentioning just, like, everything that you've done. Like, it's like it, I mean, it's so crazy, like, the things that y'all been through. I would love to kind of know, too, in a way – do you ever take time within like your career and like reflect or how often do you reflect on like, you know, the impact that you've had, the things that you've done and like the things in your career? I know with, with it being so busy, more music. I really don't you know, because I still got so much work to do. Like I'm, I'm mm. still, I'm still, I'm still in the, 
I'm still in the book opposed to sitting down on the couch going through the book. I still feel myself within the pages. I feel that. that. I feel that. that. You know what I mean? No, it makes total sense. I totally feel it. And it, it makes sense because I'm talking about how like you still have that, that passion and hunger is still there. You're, you're still working like a, like you, you know what I'm saying? Like you've never stopped. Like you continue yeah. to, I can see how that feeling is still there. 100%. Now I'm going to ask one more, uh, one more question before we get ready to wrap things up here. Cause you know, um, as somebody who's been like doing this like interview journalism thing for quite a while, uh, you know, I did my research and I think I saw a really interesting interview you did with I Am Athlete. Um, and you mentioned that your job as an individual, your purpose as an individual time in the culture today, is like uplift and educate the youth and, you know, kind of reach your hand back and bring up people as you go on continuously in your career too. Alongside like our 10K charity donation that's going to support that mission and purpose, uh, I would love to know, how does it feel to be in a place in the culture today and like with the hip hop landscape ever evolving to come to that realization to where like, you know, now you're in a place, not just keep going in your career, but now you're in a place where it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give game where I can. I'm going to help bring up the youth. I'm going to help give back. What does it feel like to be in that? That's place? the only way, the only way to get another 50 years is we got to help each one got to teach one. You know what I mean? We in a, we in an era where the youth is kind of hard headed. They get so much money that they, some of them feel they don't need the knowledge or the game. And, and we can't let that, stop us from still trying to help them. You know what I mean? And that's that's what's going to get us another 50. Because you got to know where you came from and know what what foundation was laid for you to keep this thing going. And if you don't respect that and honor it and know what it's about, then we're going to crash hard and fast. You know what I mean? And the, the people want us to crash. They don't want another 50. So we can't, we got to, we got to make sure they don't get what they desire. I love that. And, and see, I'm glad that was my last question because that's, that's how it has to end on that piece. Like, if we don't come together to really make this thing work and have value and have purpose and, like, keep it authentic and organic like it was, it'll just... And the, the sad part about what, why they're missing it is because we had to talk. I had to sit down with Red Man. I had to go talk to Big. I had to talk to Tretch. I had to talk to KRS-One and them and, and obtain the knowledge. They got it at their fingertips. Right. You can get all the knowledge. It's just about wanting it. You know what I mean? It's about wanting to know your history. Mm. Man, it's true. That's man. It's totally different. It's totally different. Yeah. And like those kind of things is is as as good as they can be for us. They can also be the total it's a double edged sword. It's a double edged sword. Yeah, man. But I 100 percent agree with you, and I, I, you know. I know it's going to be 50, 50 years more of hip hop. I know it is. We just got to make sure we take care of it and the people keep going. Everybody involved. just got a PYP, man. If everybody play their part, then we'd be good. And see, I'm going to leave it at that, man. <laughs> Thank you, Jed Kid, so much for joining us for another Thank episode you. of Speaking Voices, man. I appreciate you a thousand percent. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see y'all next time. Take care. Love is love, baby. <laughs>